This is by far my favorite spot for vacation. Even Top Gear doesn't know about this, and you have to see this for yourself. Hey, we're the honest guides of Prague, and our job is to guide you around our lovely city when you come here for vacation. But here's the question, where do we go for vacation? Well, today we're gonna show you. The list is in no specific order, no specific importance. It's simply places we love to go to for vacation. And we're starting off with Denmark Copenhagen. And not the city, but a bath very close to it. The sea bath Kastrup is a place I discovered only thanks to my friend architect Adam. Uh, we were making a show together about interesting spots in Europe in terms of architecture. And I could never believe that such a simple place, simple addition to the sea can be so amazing. And I really fell in love with the spot. It's basically just a simple pier that goes into the sea and then sort of turns around, giving you the options to sit, walk, lay down or jump into the water. And it not only looks good, but it serves its purpose so people can go swim. And we're sitting here by the river. And back in the days, it was normal that people would swim in the river in Prague because there were different baths around and they were long gone. So I hope one day someone will come and build something like they have in Copenhagen here. The place is super easy to visit. If you happen to be in Copenhagen, you just sit on a bicycle that you'll find anywhere around and you ride it to the bath. It takes about 20 minutes. Number two on my list is a country that I probably share with the most Czechs because a lot of us go there for vacation. And the country is Croatia. <laughs> but I'm not gonna tell you just go to Croatia. I'm gonna give you a specific location that I've been going to since I was a kid because my parents would take me there. And that's the island of Cres. Uh, it is the closest island uh, to our country if we drive there. So you go to a city called Rijeka and from there you take a ferry to Cres. It only takes around 10 hours, so it is a doable trip in one day. Now in general, Croatia offers beautiful beaches, uh, beautiful sea that you can see through uh, and also magical cities. And I think a lot of it is on the island of Cres, minus the people in most places. I mean, there are beaches that are packed, but if you go for a little hike about an hour, suddenly you appear on a beach where there's nobody and you can have the place to yourself. So that's something I really like. And we used to do that as kids with my parents. They would put us on a little boat with a tiny little engine and would go for an hour to finally arrive on a beach where we would spend the entire day. Now, when I go there now, since I'm more of an adult, I also admire the tiny little city of Cres that has a lot from Italy in it uh, because this place is very close to Italy the influence is quite visible. I hope you will have a chance to discover the island of Cres. And by the way, if you happen to be in Prague, there is actually a special overnight summer train that goes from Prague to Rijeka. And from Rijeka, you just take a ferry and you're there. It's worth the trip. Next up is Banat. What the hell is Banat? Well, it's a place in Romania. It's an area with many villages where people actually speak Czech which is very special to us. We actually do have a video on our channel that is explaining how come there are Czech people living in Romania and how come they still speak Czech, so you can check out that video. But why do I go there? Well, I discovered the place because I was filming a show there that was explaining the story that I just told you for a TV I used to work for. And since then I've been coming back every year. The first year I came back with my friends, then with my girlfriend, then by myself, and so on and so on. Uh, not only you can drive there, it takes a full day. It's more than a thousand kilometers. You'll drive through some interesting countries. But in the summer, you can also take a special direct train from Prague that leaves from that station and it goes all the way to the area of Banat because my friends actually uh, do a music festival there for five days at the end of August. Uh, so you can buy a ticket for that and ride on the train. It is a once in a lifetime experience you shouldn't miss. I did it once and that was enough for me on the train. I'm, I'm, I'm driving next time. As I said, there are many villages in the area. You can easily uh, travel through all of them, but my favorite is Rovensko. It is high up in the hills uh, and you can really experience uh, the area there for yourself. Where to accommodate yourself? Probably won't find anything on hotels.com or booking.com, 
uh, but you don't need to bring a tent. You can simply ring one of the bells or wait in the local pub and ask locals if you can stay with them. And that's how it works there. For 30 euros or 25 euros a night, they will make you dinner, breakfast, and you'll sleep in one of the lovely rooms. For you, there might be a language barrier, but I'm sure you'll be able to get yourself around. And it may be something you will only experience there. Because waking up to a fresh egg and fresh milk, uh, and you know, simply in that area, it's really something. Next up, London. Now, what's my relationship with London? My nephew was actually born there because my sister studied there for a while, so I used to visit a lot. So I'm not gonna give you a tip, go to London, but I'll give you a specific place that she showed me. So whenever I go back, I always go there for a full-size English breakfast, which would be the Premises Cafe. Uh, it is attached to a recording studio, so the walls are covered with pictures of famous or non-famous musicians, like Kate Nash, absolutely love her. And from there, you can walk to the famous Brick Lane Market that actually was already featured on one of our episodes when we were comparing uh, street food prices in Prague and in London. So I went to Brick Lane and I filmed some uh, stands to show that food is sometimes cheaper in London than in Prague. The next place is so hidden, even Top Gear doesn't know about it, and I have no idea what's it called, but I'll give you GPS coordinates uh, below the video. And it is this road. I found it by accident. I was driving my little Miata uh, through the Balkans on one of my road trips, and I was like, yeah, let's go on this road. And I'm driving all by myself, you know, listening to music, and suddenly I saw this, and I was like, wow, how is this here? And it's not like a must, top one road in the world to see, which for example, that famous road that was on Top Gear is. And when I visited, I was basically just stuck in traffic jam and it was horrible. Not the case of this road in Albania. So if you happen to drive there and you happen to find this road and take a nice picture, uh, there's one other recommendation I have for the area and that is to stay in the Alpine Hotel, which is only a couple miles from there. And it was a really nice day. Next place where I love to go for vacation is actually within our country, within the Czech Republic, only two hours away, and it is the other large city, which is called Brno. If you tell someone, we're going to the Czech Republic, they will immediately know you're going to Prague, because everyone will tell you, go to Prague. Well, I'm a guide, an honest guide, born and raised here in Prague, and I'm gonna tell you, go to Brno. Couple of reasons. There are no tourist traps. There is no mass tourism. There are no drunk stack parties. You can walk to any place and have a good time. It is beautiful. And yeah, maybe they don't have the bridge and the castle, but who cares when you're sitting at a great place enjoying a great meal with your great friends from Brno. You're gonna have a better time in terms of exploring local stuff in the Czech Republic in Brno than in Prague. Sorry, I hate to be honest about this, but that's how it is. Next up is not a specific place, but actually an entire city that people usually associate with winter sports and they go there to ski or snowboard, but I think you should go there to experience the city. And it's the city of Innsbruck. Innsbruck, Austria was discovered to me by my friend Wilda, who was on studies there. And he told me, look, come over uh, and experience the city. I'm like, what do you mean experience the city? There's only ski slopes. Well, I was dead wrong. The city is full of tourists. It's very vibrant. There's many uh, pubs, bars, coffee places, restaurants. And on top of that, you're surrounded by the most beautiful mountains in the world. Innsbruck is quite compact, so you can easily discover the entire city, but I will give you two tips or two must-sees in the city. Number one is Grassmeyer's uh, Bell Factory, where we actually uh, casted or he casted a bell that we bought for Prague through you, our viewers, uh, so you can go through the museum. It's a cool experience. And the second place you shouldn't miss is the Bergisel Ski Jump, where there is a coffee place, so you can actually go to the top have a coffee and enjoy the view. It is something. Now I promised you, did I, top 10 places, uh, but I only got seven. So for the next three, here's Hansa. The places I want to share with you are those where either I went back again because it was so amazing, or if I know my friends are traveling, I want to give them these recommendations. So here are three of mine. And the first one, I have no idea how to say that. So bear with me. Guts. Gatzel... I'm here to help. Gatzel... 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 
I'm truly sorry to all the viewers who know how to speak Spanish. I don't, clearly. Uh, apparently, there's an English uh, translation, Dragonstone. And that's only because this place has been in the Game of Thrones series, which I haven't seen. But the place itself is amazing. It's a piece of rock, basically, uh, covered with a, um, with a stone bridge in the ocean. And we found it by accident when we were traveling with my wife and we were waiting for better waves to go surfing in Bacchio in Spain. And suddenly we saw this on Google Maps. Uh, because of Game of Thrones, you need to have reservation to get there. The entrance is for free, so don't worry. And we didn't have the reservation. Uh, the lady was kind enough to tell us that she's leaving at five, whatever that was supposed to mean, like, yeah, you can enter after that. So we did, and we had the blast. On the top of the rock, there's a little chapel where if you go there, there's a bell. You should ring it three times to be extremely lucky till the end of your lives. Well, we didn't do it, um, but hopefully, you know, we'll manage somehow. And yeah, this place is truly amazing. And it's also really close to Bilbao, which is a fascinating city with the Guggenheim Museum. So if you ever have a chance to get there, definitely spend a few minutes driving to this Gatzele. Yeah, here, you, you see it on screen. What a Let's continue with the places I have no idea how to say out loud. So, Jokul Sarlon. Well, maybe I did. Who knows? Uh, well, this is a place on Iceland. It's a glacier lake, which is just fascinating. It's out of this planet, truly. And right next to it is a place called Diamond Beach, where you have black sand and pieces of ice on it. And the views are just breathtaking. I've been there in 2014, I came back in 2017, absolutely loved it. Uh, if you can, try to go there for the sunrise or the sunset, which in the winter is not that hard because the sun rises around 9 a.m. So even if you like to sleep, it, you'll be fine. The last place on my list is in Italy and that's in Dolomites, which just by itself is a fantastic place. I totally understand why it's in UNESCO. And if there's just one hike I should recommend, or if I could recommend to anyone, even Yannick could, you know, do it. Um, it's uh, to Lago di Sorapes. It's a blue lake lagoon at the end, and, but the views, you get the views throughout the whole hike, which is something that's not very common. You know, sometimes you go through the woods, you don't see anything, and at the end, boom. But now here you have it, the full hike, which isn't that hard, but it's also like at the end you feel like, yeah, I accomplished something so I can have my pizza, which, you know, you're in Italy. Pizza is the best thing ever. So yeah, if there's just one hike in Italy you should do, then it's definitely Lago di Sorapis. This was 10 places you shouldn't miss in Europe, but guys, this was one of the hardest episodes we ever had to make because Create the list of only 10 places? Come on, Europe is amazing. We forgot Isle of Skye. There are tons of places we would love to mention. So if you liked this kind of episode, let us know in the comments and we will be happy to make more videos like this, especially in the winter when the sun won't be shining like this. So it will be much easier to stay in a coffee place and do like a talking episode. This was Yannick. Oh no, this was Yannick. <laughs> this is Honza. And we will see you next week and I will be hopefully just behind the camera again. Bye guys. And in the end, I'm going to teach you a Czech word and it's gonna be Ledovets, which is a glacier or an iceberg. Well, in Czech, we have only one, you know, meaning or the one word, Ledovets. In English, you have two, lucky for you.